This is Todd Hanneken of St. Mary's University in San Antonio. I directed the 2013-2014 project, the integration of spectral and reflectance transformation imaging for the digitization of manuscripts and other cultural artifacts. I come to the digital humanities primarily from an interest in poorly preserved Jewish literature from antiquity. I'm particularly interested in the Book of Jubilees, of which we have small fragments among the Dead Sea Scrolls and considerably later translations in Ethiopic. The only witness in between is a 5th century copy in Latin that was erased and reused for its parchment in the 8th century. It was frequently the case that non-canonical writings were judged to be no more valuable than the parchment they were written on, which fortunately was still pretty valuable. The original writing on these reused manuscripts, or palimpsests, like the one you see on screen, is often very difficult or impossible to read with the naked eye. We now have some very powerful tools for creating digital images that greatly surpass the capabilities of the unaided human eye. Today I will present two technologies that developed in the past decade or so, and then the method of integration that we developed and published earlier this year. Some of you may be familiar with the work that Bruce Zuckerman and his team at USC have been doing with Inscript Effect and RTI, which allows relighting of textured objects such as cuneiform tablets. Some of you may be aware of the Archimedes Palimpsest project, or other spectral imaging projects such as the Sinai Palimpsest or David Livingstone Diaries. Briefly, the new development is to take the best of each technology and make them work together in one fully registered image that is greater than the sum of its parts. It's okay if you're not familiar with either, as I will explain each in more detail. Reflections transformation imaging captures and visualizes the texture of artifacts. RTI images allow the user to move the light to any angle to bring out the texture through highlights and shadows. The benefits of RTI are most apparent when imaging artifacts in which the texture is the primary conveyor of meaning, such as cuneiform tablets, inscriptions, and coins. A photograph of a cuneiform tablet taken with diffuse lighting is unreadable because we rely on highlights and shadows to see the texture. Sometimes a single angle of illumination can make an entire tablet readable but often different angles are more, most helpful for different positions. Even better for human perception is the experience of motion and interactivity. The Zuckermans and Westemitic Research at USC have a large collection of these interactive images in an online database called InscriptEffect. In this tablet we can see the movable light. I can also apply enhancements that visualize the texture and another that enhances the texture by making the surface look shinier. Coins are another good example of the strengths of RTI. Small objects are especially easy, but larger objects can be done. At risk of stating the obvious, any digital online version has huge advantages. All things digital can be copied exactly many times with no decrease in quality, and they can be transmitted over media such as the internet. This means that many scholars on many different continents could be working on the same object at the same time. Intellectual property rights, property rights can still be an issue, but in principle, once something is digitized, any student or scholar anywhere can have equal access. RTI images are created from 34, 35 or more images with light coming from different angles. Note that the light is moving, not the object or the camera. It is not a full 3D model, at least not yet. Basically, RTI images one side at a time right now. We will see advances in this direction, but my personal interests don't require unlimited movement of the object. A front and back view suffices for coins and manuscripts. RTI is really about fine texture at each pixel in the image, not modeling large structures. The fine texture of RTI makes the methodology useful even for artifacts in which texture is not the primary intended conveyor of meaning, such as manuscripts. At very high resolutions, it is possible to see, to see the thickness of ink rising over the parchment, or the corrosion of the parchment where acidic ink had once been, even if the ink itself is completely erased. However, this also brings us to the limitations of RTI and spatial resolution. Today, the best Canon DSLR cameras have a spatial resolution of 18 megapixels, which is a lot, but spread out over a full page of a manuscript, one would be lucky to reach 300 pixels per inch which is okay until you try to start zooming in on the thickness of ink. Megapixel counts will certainly go up, but all color digital cameras have the same distortion when the megapixels are maxed out. This results from the fact that color digital cameras use layers or filters to separate the light into red, green, and blue. 
On the one hand, it is a clear strength of RTI that it can be done with consumer class electronics, which are reasonably affordable and durable. The equipment can be handled by college students, as my colleagues at USC and Pepperdine have been doing, and an entry-level set of equipment could be acquired for a few thousand dollars. On the other hand, consumer class photography equipment is not the highest standard that could be justified for important artifacts. Besides spatial resolution, color digital cameras only resolve three different colors, red, green, and blue. This is fine in conventional, conventional photography because the human eye can also resolve only three basic colors and combinations thereof. However, to make illegible text legible, we need to surpass the color resolution of the human eye. This brings us to spectral imaging technology. Spectral imaging has problems of methodological nomenclature. This is the spectrum of wavelengths of light from ultraviolet to infrared. Sometimes the term spectral imaging is used if merely a single image is captured with a wavelength of light outside the visible spectrum, either ultraviolet or infrared. For a long time, we've known that infrared and ultraviolet photography can be very good at making contrasts visible that are not visible to the naked eye. But we can do more with more wavelengths of light. Some prefer the term multispectral to mean distinguishing multiple wavelengths on the spectrum. There is only one spectrum. Or, hyper, or hyperspectral to imply a range in resolution that surpasses the perception of the human eye. Regardless of nomenclature, the point is that recent technology has three or four times the color resolution of the human eye. Not only can the technology see infrared and ultraviolet, it can distinguish between, between reds that we cannot distinguish, and similarly with greens and blues. This increased color resolution can be important in a number of ways. For example, a painting may, be, may have been touched up with a paint that matches the original as far as the eye can see, but not as the computer sees. In my work with manuscripts, the main importance is the ability to distinguish browns. At first appearance, the Jubilee's palimpsest appears to be a jumble of browns. The parchment is brown, the erased ink is brown, the upper text is brown, the imperfections in the animal skin are brown, the traces of glue and chemicals are brown, etc. Brown basically means all three color receptors are being triggered roughly equally. This graph shows the sensitivity of the human eye to various wavelengths. It would be relatively easy for two materials of different spectral signatures to look nearly identical to the human eye, but completely different to spectral imaging that resolves more bands. Two browns can look the same to a human, but not to spectral imaging. When I say that the computer sees something, I'm loosely describing a process that allows us to see something we wouldn't otherwise see. This means capturing a large amount of data and then boiling it down to our range of perception. The capture sequence requires capturing a separate image for each wavelength. The camera and object remain unchanged, but the light panels use narrow band LED lights to shine a very specific color of light. Consequently, any light received by the camera in that capture is light that the object reflects in that wavelength. This requires the camera and object to be immobile, but it has clear advantages over a color camera that filters the light into red, green, and blue receptors at the same time. Once upon a time, spectral imaging was done by shining a bright light and filtering out at the camera all but a certain wavelength. The narrowband illuminators avoid the distortion of filters and avoid bombarding the object with light radiation, which is a concern to conservatives. Each of the 12 or so images under different wavelengths is stored as a monochrome image. Sometimes seeing a contrast can be as simple as looking at the right one of those 12, such as infrared. Sometimes it is a matter of basic math. In the case of the Livingstone Diaries, the famous English explorer in Africa wrote with berry juice over newsprint. The faded berry juice absorbed UV, but not IR, while the newsprint absorbed IR and UV equally. Subtracting one from the other made the berry juice stand out clearly from the newsprint. In other cases, the pattern is considerably more complex, and it takes computational science to find the contrasts. Principal component analysis is able to filter the redundant data out of a large data set and present the greatest contrasts in order of degree of contrast. Again, sometimes looking at one of these monochrome principal component images suffices to make erased text stand out from overtext and other distractors. However, one can make better use of the three human color receptors by selecting two or three principal components and rendering them in the red, green, and blue channels of a digital image. This technique is called PCA pseudocolor because it uses colors but not to resemble reality, 
but rather to visualize the greatest contrast in the complex data set. One new process bears closer resemblance to reality, but extends the color spectrum to include ultraviolet and infrared, and uses PCA to find the greatest contrasts within the red, green, and blue ranges, respectively. Even accurate color renderings with spectral imaging are more accurate than conventional cameras because the color sensors in, digital, in, in conventional cameras only roughly approximate the human eye, and digital imaging processing relies on subjective color matching. Spectral imaging accurate color images are, perfect, are perfectly consistent without relying on human subjectivity. Let me summarize the advantages and disadvantages of spectral imaging technology. The color range and resolution of the da larger data set shows or can be processed to show accurate color or a wide range of enhancements. The narrowband illumination makes it possible to use a more accurate monochrome sensor, which easily reaches 50 megapixels without the distortions of filters. The use of an advanced imaging sensor is both an advantage in quality and a disadvantage in cost. Such a camera can cost thirty to fifty thousand dollars plus lenses and other accessories. For an isolated project, renting is a better option. Compared to RTI, the main disadvantage of spectral imaging is that it produces two-dimensional images with no interactivity and without processed renderings of texture. Last year, the NEH funded a project that successfully integrated RTI and spectral imaging technologies. We can now create images that have all the advantages of each. They have the interactivity and texture enhancements of RTI and the high spatial and color resolution of spectral imaging, along with all the highly processed enhancements. The combination is greater than the sum of its parts because for any pixel, we can visualize its spectral signature and texture at the same time. So faint corrosion of the parchment and faint rem remnants of ink might combine to allow us to discern where a letter had once been. This is possible because the entire data set is created in one session with one camera. So a pixel represents the same spot on the artifact throughout the data set. In order to integrate the two technologies, we experimented with two techniques. The longer method essentially multiplied the effort of the two technologies, while the shorter method simply added them. The longer method did all the narrow bands at each of the 35 positions around a hemisphere, while the shorter method did the narrow band illumination of spectral imaging and then did the 35 angles with a simple flash. We were, we were very pleased to find that the shorter method was as effective as the longer method. That means an entire sequence can be captured well within 20 minutes, and the cost is only negligibly, negligibly higher than the cost of spectral imaging. The key to the integration relies on software processing, which graphs the shadows and highlights of RTI onto the color information of spectral imaging. This works because spectral imaging alone uses diffuse light to identify chrominance and avoid interference from texture, while RTI uses luminance variation to identify texture and uses only conventional color. The grafting of luminance and chrominance occurs in the YCC color space, an alternative to the more common RGB color space. We tested imaging four objects that posed different challenges. The first was an erase manuscript with very simple color and texture. This manuscript was originally a book of hours, and was erased but not overwritten. The erasure was very thorough, and the corrosion of ink on parchment rather subtle. We chose this as a challenging example of an erased manuscript. Here we see a detail of a single word, rogo, I entreat. In the first frame, we see an accurate color image created by spectral imaging technology. The color and resolution are great, but there are no indicators of texture. In the second, we see a frame from an RTI image that shows the texture, but the color and resolution are noticeably diminished. The third shows the integration with both the texture and accurate color. Already, this particular example is quite readable. We can also extend the spectrum to show ultraviolet and infrared, as in the fourth frame. The reason it looks a little blue is because the parchment reflects ultraviolet, here rendered as visible blue, while the remnants of ink absorb ultraviolet. The fifth frame shows pseudocolor, which is enhanced to show ink and traces of ink in stark contrast. In fact, I think if you look carefully at the capital R, it looks like there is a smudge of ink under the capital R, which has itself been mostly erased. One possibility is that the scribe began to write a lowercase r, and quickly removed the ink before it had time to set in, 
then wrote an uppercase R, which was left on the page much longer, so had a more permanent staining and corrosion of the parchment. Of course, the real joy of RTI is the interactivity, so I have a screen capture here. As we look at different areas of the page, we see that there are, that there are some more, some are more challenging than Rogo, but with a little diligence, most of it is readable. Here we see a word that is partly legible through ink remnant and partly legible through corrosion. The N in Nolam looks like a V in direct light, but the corrosion where the top stroke had been appears in raking light. We also imaged a painted mummy mask from Roman period Egypt. Here we get a little more color and texture complexity on a still basically flat object. This shows potential for artifacts such as paintings, frescoes, and icons. The accurate color RTI shows very fine detail in the brush strokes and conservation of the object. The extended spectrum can give us an idea that the whiteness of the eye would have been starker in daylight before the patina of the centuries. Some details of composition come out only in pseudocolor. Consider this detail from the edge of the chin. In the pseudocolor on the right, we can clearly see a blue stripe between the purple of the chin and the yellow of the, of the background. The blue matches the exposed wood elsewhere in the pseudocolor. In the accurate color on the left, the painted background closely resembles the unpainted portion, but the processed image shows a stark difference in their composition and spectral signature. As a test of objects of deeper texture, we imaged a terracotta figurine. This artifact from Roman period Egypt is believed to commemorate Hadrian's subjugation of, Bar of the Bar Kokhba revolt. Note the curved sicar, the distinctive weapon which gave the Sicarii their name. Technologically, the concern was whether the deep textures and unintended shadows would create problems for the processing. We're happy to say there were no substantial problems. Note, however, that this molded figurine is essentially one-sided. Imaging a full statue would be possible, but would requ require a separate sequence for each camera angle. The sequence of details of the Sikar is like the Rogo detail earlier. The first shows the spectral imaging color without texture, the second shows the RTI texture with limited color and spatial resolution, and the third shows the integration. The extended spectrum and pseudocolor images make apparent the traces of paint on the figurine. Even though the most obvious conveyor of meaning is the texture, the original object was also rich in color, and spectral enhancements help detect the slightest traces of paint. The figurine is also a good place to illustrate some of the processing capabilities of the RTI viewer. Normal's, Normal's visualization shows the texture of the object with each surface angle represented by a different color. Specular enhancement simulates making the object shinier, as if it were coated in silver. The image is interactive, but even a still image here shows texture clearly. Finally, as a test of processing complex color, we imaged an illuminated manuscript. The accurate color image on the left is itself an improvement over conventional photography. The extended spectrum image in the middle makes it a little more apparent that some lines were touched up later with a different ink. The pseudocolor image on the right shows the effects of PCA processing on rich color. Some contrasts are more apparent and others less, so some tuning would be appropriate if one were concerned only with a limited area of the page. We use another page of this codex to illustrate the spatial resolution capabilities. At 2,190 dots per inch, the thickness of paint becomes readily apparent, and it is easy to distinguish places where paint remains on the surface from places where the paint stained the parchment and then shipped off. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned to palimpsest.stmarytx.edu for more on the Jubilees Palimpsest project and other projects making use of Spectral RTI.